Z-Man. As you can see, I've been a big fan for many years. And if I could have my money back for every pack that I've spent $7 on, I'd be able to afford a nice little shack on the beach in Tijuana. But that is a conversation for a different day. Now today we are here to talk about the new Mulletron for 2024. Now what originally drew me in is it is a different profile. You can see this is the diesel minnow and this is the Mulletron. It is a more compact bait. It has a lot more fins, which is going to change the aerodynamics. And also, it is a thicker bait for its size. She thick. But, I'm testing it today on the water to see if it catches any better or worse. And to give you guys an honest review of my experience with this new Mulletron. Stick around for the end of the video. I'm going to give you my pros and cons and what I found. Hardly any water moving right now. Which is not good. Gotta be in that current. Especially when you're doing this type of jigging. I figured that it would be still be moving a little bit. It is. There we go. There we go. Good fish. I'm hitting spot lock. Oh, I just foul hooked. A oh, lizard, no. Oh man, that is not what we want. Do lizard lives matter? Hey buddy, what's up G? You're hot. I can feel it dragging the rocks, which is scary. All right, fish on. Black sea bass, okay. Well, getting a mix here. There's three boats on the other side of the jetty, or on the other jetty wall. And I know why, it's because the current's so crazy right here. I've got wind going one way and current going the other, and I'm just like rocking like a washing machine. But, there's a fish here, I'm gonna try to stick it out. Oh, I lost my tail. Bluefish? Well, that's not something that happens often with a Z-Man. Don't love that. Show you what I'm talking about right while I rig up this new one. This is my last one, only three in the pack. These tails are kind of skinny when they stretch. I know that that's what gives it that different action. But when you get cut off, it ain't worth it. Because these things are expensive, you know, you go out and use a pack every time you fish. Or more. I mean, I'm just one person. If you got a family, you got kids that's fishing, they're gonna get hung up and stuff. Fishing baits add up quick. I wonder if that was those Spanish or blues, whatever is busting on uh, the glass minnows up on the rocks. There's a good fish, y'all. All right. Oh, that's good, man. I just... No, no clue what I got here. It's really doing some fighting. Uh, bulldogging really strangely. Getting in the current, too, so... Whatever it is, it feels really good. I don't have my drag too tight. That's the only thing that's kind of throwing me off right now. Because it's not really peeling drag. But this is on the Mulletron. This is on the old Tegra 4000. Fishing 25 foot of water. This is the first good fish out here today. I've been fishing for about an hour. Nice drum. Okay. Nice red. Nice red. It might be a little too big, but I haven't had red in a while, so I would love to eat one. 
still a little green. That's what's got me nervous right now. So a little green. Not hooked the best. All right, there we go. There we go. Yeah, baby. I have not caught a red in a while. That's a good one. I'm dead middle of this current over here. And I could not catch a fish on the outside edges at all. I've been trying. It might be 26. I don't know. We're going to see. 26 and a half. I'll see if I can show you guys a little better. 26 and a half. That is a perfect eater fish. Oh, I'm so excited. Thank you, buddy. Here you go, buddy. Here. Drink, buddy. So that wind out there is really starting to pick up and uh I was in a washing machine for too long. So what I'm going to do is run inside and fish some grass lines, some pinch points, some creeks, and see if we can switch it up with the Mullitron and pull something else off. First fish right here. Feels good too. Swimming me out. Oh, get out of that trolling motor. This is my first inshore fish with the Ultegra. Oh, it feels good too. I don't really know what it is yet. The way it's swimming is a little strange. Not really pulling drag like a red, but swimming around unlike a flounder in my experience. I haven't seen it yet not seen it yet don't want to put too much pressure okay good flounder it's a good flounder it's a good one okay, okay i don't want to lose this this is a really good flounder keep that head on the water you see me taking my time gosh it's always so tough because you try to take your time you're making the right decision you've got the net you're not putting too much pressure pulling the hook out of its mouth fish is still around there's probably more i've seen bait getting worked in this area so we're gonna keep fishing oh nice Nice. Look at that fish just throwing up there on some grass and popping it. All right, I'm trying to get uh get my bearings, put the spot lock on. Okay, he was up next to some grass. I'm gonna be a little more violent with this one because I lost that last fish. Here we go. I went ahead and pulled him in. Very really good. Good flounder there. He also inhaled it too. That is number two on the mullet mulletron. Might have to use enough pliers here. There we go. Let's see what he is. 18 inches. Sweet. Alright, buddy. Come back. Really what I'm doing is just trying to target anything that looks abnormal on the shoreline. I'm using the Texas Eye. I'm a big fan of the Texas Eye for any Z-Man plastics, but also very important to note shrimp procure. I think scent is half the battle with this stuff, but uh, we're going to get back out. Uh, it's turning into a good day. You 
gonna work. There we go. The fish. Cast it right up there on the Oh, that's a good fish. Oh, that's a good fish. I don't know what we have yet. I don't know what we have. I don't know yet. I'm stepping down. Okay. Taking my time. I'm trying to keep him out of oh a good flounder. Good flounder. Alright. Okay, this is flounder of the day right here. Trying to swing him. It's the best way possible for me. Ah, oh, missed him. Swing and a miss. This time I'm keeping that nose down a little better. That is a really good one. Wow. That's a solid fish right there. Okay. Whew, that's a good one, man. He's a little bit bigger than that last one. I'd say about an inch or two. Not as quite as big as that one I lost, but close. Okay, so he is about 20 inches. I don't know how much y'all can see of that. 20 inches. All right, buddy. All right, so we spent a day on the water. I do have an opinion about it. Let's sit down at the house and talk about the Mullitron. Let's talk about the pros and cons, and then I will go directly into my review of the Mullitron. But Z-Man historically has been very durable. I've had many days where the swimmers, I'll have chunks missing from the head to the tail and I'm still able to continue fishing this profile because I never have issues with the tail getting ripped off. Another thing I love about Z-Man is that they are buoyant, which is good for many reasons. The main reason being that when the jig head falls through the water column, the tail is rising up so it, it swims. You know, it makes sense, they call it the swimmers. Also, if you leave it on the bottom for a second, It'll actually flutter in the current, which is a big seller. Also, if you happen to lose your bait, you can see it floating on top of the water column. You can scoop it up and then you don't have to worry about the fish eating it and not being able to digest it. So there's a few reasons why that buoyancy is really nice. Now, supposedly these baits are non-toxic. Now, I know they don't biodegrade because I've caught fish that have plastics in their bellies. So that's kind of misleading, but we're going give to them, give them some grace on this one. And the last thing I really like about the Z-Man products is that they're very natural. They look like a fish swimming in the water column. And I think that's due to historically the tail and the way they designed it. It tapers to the tail end. So naturally that tail is gonna fall back in the water column and just flutter. Now let's go with the negatives because there are negatives. These plastics are not compatible with other plastics. So if you put them in the same box as for example, a gulp or let's say a zoom fluke, you're gonna have issues where these plastics will start to melt. Another factor with that same problem is if you have to store these in different areas, you're gonna take up more storage because you have to have tackle boxes or bags for these plastics that can't coexist with other baits. So just, it, there, there's a storage issue there. Another thing that's tough about these baits is they're hard to rig because they're so stretchy. <laughs> That's great that it's stretchy because it doesn't break in a fish's mouth. But at the same time, you really have to line up your, uh, your jig head straight and properly. And even then it's gonna be a pain to get it on the bait. Once it's there, it's there most of the time, but that's something to consider. And the last thing is price, which all fish and stuff is expensive. It's gonna continue to go up. But for example, with the Mullitron, this is now t like 10 bucks a pack for three versus Historically, what you've gotten with the, the diesel minnow, you get a pack of four or a pack of five if you go even smaller. So that's a big factor. Now with the Mullitron specifically, I really don't think it casts very well in the wind. I had many uh, casts where I'm like, all right, I'm gonna dial this one in and I'd miss my spot by two or three feet. It's not aerodynamic at all. I think it's because this tail section one doesn't taper. So it's just a big blob on the end of the bait getting caught up in the wind. And then all these extra fins, it looks cool. It sells a fisherman. I don't think it does anything but cause problems when you're trying to cast a 20, 30 foot cast. 
Another thing, I, I mean, I just kind of spoke on it a little bit, but I don't like the tail section at all. I love how they created this diesel minnow and how it tapers. That creates that natural flutter. And I understand this is a different profile, so there are going to be times where switching it up could help you. But it just it's just, it's not ideal for me. It doesn't cast very well. And when I lost two tail sections of my three out of that first pack, something tells me that they've got an issue down here in this tail section. I can't, aff I can't afford to fish them. I mean, that's plain and simple. I'm gonna stick with what's worked with me in the past. Uh, should you buy the Mullatron? It's really boiling down to personal preference. If you're already a fan of Z-Man, you've got every color in the diesel minnow and the, and the swimmers, should you go out and get Mullatron as well? it might be good to have another profile. There's been days where I'm fishing a spot, I catch a few fish, all of a sudden that bait doesn't work any well, I switch to a different bait or a different color and I start catching again. That's an argument why this Mullatron could be a good use for you. Uh, fish, they'll turn off of one, they see a different profile coming through with a different tail action, it might turn the fish back on. That's an argument for them. Am I going to fish them? Probably not. Uh, I already have a whole tackle box full of their older products that I don't even use 90% of. So for me to go out and buy the complete lineup of different colors, shapes, and sizes of the Molotron, it's just not realistic for me. Does that mean I don't think they're great? Uh, again, that's going to be personal preference. I don't like the tail section. I don't like that. I was cut off twice out of three times with a single pack. So it's up to you guys at this point. Take it, take it with a grain of salt. You need to get out and fish it yourself. But if you have any questions about anything, drop it in the comments down below and I'll be happy to help you out. Appreciate y'all. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Shoot me a like. Share it with a friend. Thank you.